This episode of The Slipcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they usually say, our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Brits Blend, the Smoked, Savory, and the Kerry Steak. You can't go wrong with any of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to check out the three great box sets that the Mad Canadian has. It is the Just Send It, the Sweet Heat, and the Whole Hog, which consists one of each of the 14 great seasonings over again at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to also use the promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Also be sure to check out the social media sites of the Mad Canadian to check out where he and his food trek are heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch Fresh roast to order coffee company based out of Toledo, Perrysburg, more specifically, Ohio. All of their beans are fair trade certified, USDA organic. They are beans based on integrity. It is coffee based on integrity. It is at a company based on integrity. Run by a former Marine and his wife, they uh, offer some of the best coffee you can get in the entire world. Again, all fresh roast to order. You can find out so much more at their website, ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going today, YouTube and Sloopcats? Hey, what's up, Discord? What's up, YouTube? I don't know what the energy of the show is going to be yet. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, we got our sloop cats down in the in the live chat, mm -hmm. so that's fun. Um, yeah, it's yeah. I, you know what? I think let's just do it because I don't I don't know what else I don't know what else there is other than uh, other than to just do it at this point. I think. Yep, let's get right into it. Let's go. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm all right. I'm I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Considering. Yes, I am here. Yes, I am here. You are here. We're here because we're here because we're here because we're here. And if yes. anyone out there actually gets that reference, please let me know because you'd be my new favorite person. Exactly like what Michigan Bucknut said. Long day. Long day. Uh, it's been a long 24 hours. Kyle, What we're 23 hours approximately removed from the, the kickoff. Mm. Um. It's not been fun. Um, you know, what's 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 the energy of this show? What's the energy of this episode? And I, I think I have a couple conflicting thoughts here. One, never apologize for having expectations. It is the expectation at Ohio State that you win the national title. And never apologize for that. Never accept anything less than that. Because when you start accepting mediocrity is when you become Michigan, is when you become Texas, is when you become Tennessee. So never apologize for having expectations. Also, this was a, this was a good season. Like we shouldn't have, realistically, this, this season shouldn't have happened. It's yeah, amazing I mean, that we got any football at all. So also appreciate expectations high. Always keep your expectations, but also appreciate this season for what it was. I mean, yeah, look back at September. We didn't even have football. There was a couple of weeks there. Where we were like, there is no Ohio State football. And now, and now... 
we just watched Ohio State playing a national title game here. It's it is it is crazy. Yes, exactly, Stuart. This is your reminder. Yeah. Hashtag fire Kevin Warren. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, given the season, Ohio State finishes seven and one for the season here. Not not how you want to end your season in a blowout in the national title. No. But given everything that happened here, it was a it was a successful season. Um, you win your your conference. Yeah. You got over the hump of beating Clemson. Yep. You got to take it to Dabo and his gang. Yep. It was it was a successful season. And it was a very out successful of, season. Out of 127 teams, Ohio State was number two. And you want to be number one. You, abs- you absolutely want to be number one. But I'm, I'm just not going to feel too bad about being number two. Mm-hmm. And for whatever that's worth, you know, there, there's, there's, a huge, there's a huge distance between number one and number two, especially when you lose in the fashion you lost. And Ohio State was out, you know, outside of the first three eighths of that game was, was not in the competition. It was it was lights out. What it would and you know there's blame to be spread around, and there are things that you simply couldn't help and couldn't fix. Uh, I got into a whole Twitter thing about was this. And and I, I don't even want to frame it like this because I, I don't think this is the way to frame the conversation because a lot of people attempted to twist it into, was this a coaching issue or a talent issue? And a lot of people tried to twist it into a way in which I was saying it was purely a talent issue. And Michigan Bucknet says neither. I, I mean, both. <laughs> I think it was, it's failure is multifaceted. You you can't you can't have it all on one thing. And and yes, Michigan Bucknut, they only played seven games. And it, there was a chemistry issue, there was a player development issue, it was a talent issue, it was a coaching issue, it was a health it was a health issue. They lost Cam Brown. It was a legal issue. You know, they lost Wint and they lost Reap. And Ohio State, I said this a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand and one, Ohio State was down seven defensive backs from last year's squad. Seven. I mean, we we even mentioned it at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, at the middle of the year. Offenses were going to look really good this year because of the lack of practice, the, the lack of the easy games at the beginning of the year to really for lack of a better of a term, to figure your shit out. Yeah. What's worked, what works, what doesn't, what scheme works. I mean, look at the um, 2014 team. You lose the second game of the year. You're like, this team has no offensive line. It's garbage and all that. Mm-hmm. And they were able to turn it around, fix what needed to be fixed. They didn't really get the practice. They didn't get spring spring camp there. Shorten, shorten practices, shorten season. I don't want to I don't want to sit here and make it seem like it's an excuse but it's it is what it is though. I don't think it's an excuse, I think it's a reason. Mhm. Cuz I I think it's an excuse when you say well Bama won because of this. And I don't think that's what we're saying. We're saying Ohio State was not at their best because of this. I think it's an excuse when you say the refs gave it to them. That's an excuse. Even when it's true, it's also an excuse. Mm-hmm. But I mean, realistically, as I'm kind of just soaking this all in still, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm to the point right now, I'm like, okay, I'm accepting this, uh, the game there. And I'm kind of ready to move on. Yeah. 
but looking at it, especially watching how Alabama was running their offense, it was just the execution that Alabama had was just crazy good. Yeah. Just kind of like perfect. Kind of flawless. Like when you, yeah. When you look at like Ohio State versus Clemson, there were some of those drives. They were just perfect. There's nothing Clemson would have could have done mm-hmm. to stop Ohio State that day. I think that's the same thing here with this Alabama team. I uh, even 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 the scheme here, was even not I, hold on even, even Michigan even Michigan Bucknut the scheme was not great yeah even <laughs> even here we'll get even there. if they had Toji even if they had everybody healthy hundred percent Bama's scheme got it I don't Sorry. I don't think uh, State so would have won for how Alabama played Monday night no and a lot of people they played, they played lights out a lot of people are calling for Coach Combs's head. And it's not, it's not fair. No. It's not a and fair coach. Again, we talk about seven, de- seven defensive backs down. We talk about a disjointed, interrupted off season. So you come in as a fresh defensive coordinator. Ohio state has lost their seven. I don't want to say their seven most experienced backs because Sean Wade would have also been so like seven of your eight most experienced defensive backs. You lose an off season's worth of practice, all this disjointed, everything players missing time throughout the season. The defense was in shambles. And did coach Combs overcome that? No. Would you like him to have? Yes. First year defensive coordinator working against the disjointed 2020 season and down seven defensive backs linebackers who were average at best. I like Pete Warner a lot, uh, but the, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, the thing is, and a lot of people get really upset with me when I said there was a talent gap and, uh, just for the record, when I say there was a talent gap, I'm talking strictly Bama's offense versus Ohio State's defense. I'm not talking about the top 85 players. I'm talking about Bama's offense, which included a first, at least one first round offensive lineman and three Heisman finalists. And Kyle, is there a defensive player? who was on the field for Ohio State last night, who would qualify as a first round pick if they went pro? Is there one? On the defensive side? Specifically on the defensive side, yes. No. I can't even think of any, no. No. There's not a single player. Now, there are players who played last night who can develop into first round talents. But they're not first round talents right now. I'm looking at Zach Harrison. This is a guy who at the, you know, we fast forward the clock a year. We might be talking about Zach Harrison as a first round guy. He's not eligible to leave right now. He's only two years out of high school. But if he was able to go to the NFL draft right now, he's not a first round player. So there are players on the team, Seven Banks, I think is a guy who could develop into a first round player. But is he one right now? Hell no. Point is, is there was not any first round talent on that field for Ohio State's defense last night. Not one. And Bama was loaded with first round talents, loaded with Heisman finalists. And I'm not saying that the defensive scheme was good. I, I don't know why they stuck with the 4-4 for as long as they did. But a lot of people are like, well, they didn't make any adjustments. No, they made adjustments. Now, did they leave their 4-4, 4-3 personnel enough? No, I don't think that they did. Did, you know, they at one point had, and he, by, they said, well, it, you, a lot of people were like, they had tough Borland matched up man-to-man against um, against Smith, which is not, it was his own concept. That was a deep three. It's, it's not, 
it, he split the deep third between the corner and the safety because it was a well-designed play. Point being is that they did not have Borland on him one-on-one. -on -one. It was not a man concept. But you still were in a situation in which Smith was running down the field completely unguarded. Let's just call that what it is. No one was on Smith is a more accurate way of saying than Borland was on Smith. No one was on him. And <laughs> that's worse, better. I don't know the same, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I think the point here is that were there schematic issues? Absolutely. But I don't think that there was a magical defense that any defensive coordinator could have pulled out of their bag of tricks that would have actually saved the day for Ohio State in the national championship game. They were not on the same field talent wise. Ohio State needed to play on the other side of the line of scrimmage against Bama the way they did against Clemson in order to have a chance of stopping Bama sometimes, which is what that was the best case scenario was holding Bama to like 31. That was best case scenario. That was always the best case scenario, holding Bama to like 31. And the defensive line, which should be the strength at Ohio State, wasn't. They, they, they got no pressure against Mac Jones. It's they're, they're, when your defensive backs are outmatched and your linebackers are unathletic and your defensive line is getting nothing done against the opponent's offensive line, you're screwed. And there's not a schematic change you can make to actually fix things. Bama scored 52 and they they took their foot off the gas. They could have scored more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially in that fourth quarter. I felt like they could have definitely scored more there. Uh, so let's talk about the <clears throat> just the different stats here in the game here, Jared. So I think first and foremost, first game, first play of the game, Trey Sermon gets injured. Um look like a collarbone issue. Um, do have some good news saying that the injury is not as serious as it appeared to be. Um, but they, but the football program declined to share what exactly it is, but, um, Trey's mom came out and said, it's not as serious, but they did eventually come out and just say he's definitely sore and in definitely in a lot of pain, but it's not as serious as what we appear to appears to be. Cause there was a lot of talk about maybe like a broken collarbone yeah. or something like that too. But definitely your, your hot hand running back going out that first, that first play, it was just a, yeah. Man. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it almost, it almost feels like that in a way when that happened, it almost kind of felt like the Ohio state Florida game, <laughs> your star wide receiver yeah. takes it to the house and that's all he gets to do in that game. Trey gets one touch Trey, on the ball, and yeah. that's all he got to do. Yeah, and it's not it's not a situation in which you ever want to be in as an Ohio State team because Ohio State found themselves in that situation against Clemson last year. You lose mm -hmm. RB1, and then you're kind of screwed. It was much later in the game for J.K. Dobbins, granted, but the game also played out a lot differently. Yeah. And is is Trey Sermon, and let's add Tommy Togiai to that list, and let's add Smith to that list. Are they enough to make up the difference that was this game? Probably not. If you had all of them at full health and participating, is that enough to, no pun intended, turn the tide of this game? Probably not. But you don't know. Mm -hmm. that that that's the thing is that you don't know because like does trey sermon play defense no of course not but maybe ohio state has better sustained drives which keeps the defense off of the field more which changes the complexity of the game which allows ohio state to not go down so big so early which D doesn't make them one dimensional the same way that Ohio State made Clemson one dimensional last week. 
because once you become one dimensional and the defensive line can just pin their ears back and go, it's it's real hard. So is Trey Sermon worth the points? Probably not. It would have made a lot closer game. But yeah, here's the thing. I'd love to find out. We'll never get yeah. to find out. But I, I sure wish I knew. I sure mm -hmm. wish I got to see it play out. Yep. That's the thing is that you just you just never know. Mm -hmm. And so income income is Master Teague. Yeah. He gets 15 touches, 65 yards. Not the greatest average, but it, it was it was tough sliding Tough sledding for him all game there. Uh, he had a couple of nice runs there. He has he has, yeah. he has a pair of touchdowns to go um, for the game there. Uh, but I think I think the big thing here was just how off Justin Fields really looked. Seventeen for thirty three, buck ninety four passing in one touchdown. Just definitely didn't seem like he felt comfortable in the pocket a lot of the time. Remind me a lot of what Ohio State did to Clemson. Pressure yeah. right down the middle mm -hmm. made him uncomfortable on throwing the ball. And you saw that a lot too, where the ball was just just over somebody. The ball had hung a little bit longer than it should. Um, so some of the passes should have, should have been caught, yes. But I think overall, a lot of them just didn't have the same zip, the same accuracy of what we typically see from Justin Fields. Well, yeah, as you said, he had pressure up his face all day and it kind of leads me to the biggest disappointment and where, you know, Kyle and I both picked Ohio State to win this. And I really do. I really don't feel like it was. I mean, it feels stupid to say now, obviously, but I really I don't feel like it was like some sort of stupid Homer pick. What I got wrong, what I really, really got wrong. And what made the difference in the game I thought I was going to see and the game I ended up seeing was the play on the lines. I really thought Ohio State would have the advantage on the lines. Missing Togiai and Smith absolutely hurt that. Uh, I really thought Ohio State's offensive line was going to play better than they did. If you want to look at Fields and the bad game that he had, I'm not putting all of that on the offensive line. He missed some open receivers. So I'm, I'm not I'm not putting that all on the offensive line. But I am putting some of it on the offensive line. You have even on a screenplay, you have to slow down the defensive line a little bit so that so <laughs> it was at the last legitimate Ohio State drive of the second half. The, the screen was there. It was all there. Teague could have run for a real long time. The offensive line, even on a screenplay, needs to slow down the defensive line a little. Mm -hmm. And they didn't. And that I think that's my biggest issue, my biggest miss as someone who tried to predict the outcome of this game was how poorly both the offensive and defensive lines played. Yeah. I mean... The numbers don't really show too much of it. I mean, you look at the line here, Ohio State only giving up one sack against Alabama here, Ohio State getting two sacks against uh, Alabama. But what really doesn't show in the numbers here is that pressure right up the middle. And yeah, I, I agree with Jared. Just well, it's the, the same lack, thing with uh, Ohio State lack, versus Clemson. Ohio State only had like two sacks, but it doesn't tell the story of the constant pressure Lawrence but, was under. But what really shows the stat here is looking at the accuracy between the two quarterbacks. That really tells you a lot. Most of the time tells you the pressure that they, that they have to face fields 17 for 33 Mac Jones, 36 for 45. 36 for 45. Yeah. I, that's the quarter. And does that mean Mac Jones is a much better quarterback than Justin Fields? No. In the same way that Justin Fields' impressive stats against Clemson and Trevor Lawrence's bad stats against Ohio State does not necessarily mean Justin Fields had a was was is way better than Trevor Lawrence. It just it, that's an indicative of the pressure they were under. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean. You got to give hats off to um, 
to Sarkeesian too. He just, yeah, just, he just, he had such a great plan for against Ohio state's defense. And if you listen to, um, to Harris's uh, post game, um, talk with a couple Harris, of the reporters, yeah. he even said, he even said that Ohio state's defense played well. It's just that they played even better. They, just had a better game plan. Like, Hey, the linebackers are shooting our gaps. You know what we do? Slants screen passes. And they did that all game and often too. Yeah. And it was, it was frustrating too. It's like, you know, that they're going to do that, but they still did it and got away with it. Ohio state was just kind of in a no win situation. You know, mm-hmm. you, if you devoted a lot of resources to Smith, they threw it to Harris or they ran mm-hmm. it with Harris. If they yeah, tried yeah. to devote a lot of players to, and they just, Ohio State did not have, you know, and again, to go back to the tough Borland play, you know, I had someone say to me, you know, how, how is it a talent issue when you have tough Borland one-on-one, which is not the case, by the way, it was not man-to-man, one-on-one with Smith. And my response to that is, first off, it wasn't man to man. But secondly, Ohio State didn't have anyone, anyone on the field who could even attempt to get in Smith's way. No, I no mean, one. Ohio what, State what, has what was no that? one anywhere on the defense who belonged in on the same field in the same universe with Devonta Smith. Yeah. Period. I think. I think the final stats is all in the first half, too, for for Smith. He had 12 catches, 215 well, yards. Well, literally, because like, he got hurt. Yeah. I think he got hurt like that first pass that came to him that in ended up incomplete. 215 yards reception. And yeah, he could he could do no wrong. Uh, yeah, Michigan Bucknut. They got Smith involved in so many ways. And you saw it, too, like when Ohio State went man-to-man and he – go in motion and just his speed just it's just a full-on just you run to the you run to the sideline get the ball to you quickly and you do you you do you <laughs> he, he he does him and he just makes guys miss with just his talent his speed and it's just it's just crazy yeah yards after catch was just huge huge for both Devonte smith and um harris as well I mean, you look at Harris's number, 22 carries for 79 yards. You're like, wow, they they really held Harris in check there. 22 for 79 yards. That's it's not that great of an average, but but they still get him in white. They still keep Ohio State in check because they run him so much, which is why Mac Jones went off there too. Mm-hmm. Those slants, those uh curls, those screen passes too. They just got they just had the right game plan at the right time. Yeah. And again, if we go back to, was it a talent issue or was it a coaching issue? It's both. There was not a scheme that could save Ohio state's talent. That is not to say that the scheme that they used was the best scheme because it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It failed on many occasions. I, but I, just, I don't know what scheme fixes it. I, I, they, I, they simply, when you just don't have the talent yeah. and they, and they didn't, Ohio state did not have the talent available to them. The, the only option on the, the only defensive op- side of the ball to answer the question that was Bama's offense. The only option Jared was to go score to score with Alabama. Right. But the offensive line for Ohio state, I really, it, and of course, losing Sermon mm-hmm. just kind of made that not possible. Ohio State's offensive line needed to play their best game of the year, and and they didn't. Mm-hmm. But you know what, Jared? What's that? You yourself can can be that person to be in the. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Kyle! Oh, you! Oh, you! <laughs> Oh, I had something, and then I just see you just staring back. You you had nothing, buddy. You had go on. You had nothing. 
Uh, Maybe you had something, but it was taking you too long right, to let's, get there. Let's get to our sponsors here. Yes. Let's get to our sponsors. I, I screwed that up badly. It's all good. <laughs> all right. All right. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, our good friend, Mad Canadian, good friend of ours, great, some great seasonings he cooked up in his lab. Uh, let's see. Let's talk about Jared. One of my favorites, the Kerry Steak. Kerry Steak goes on so many so many different um meals obviously it goes well on steak i put it i put it on burgers put it on turkey burgers um it goes great on so so many um different meats for your um for your grilling appetite you want something a little bit more spicy jared yes oh, how about the four horsemen the spiciest seasoning that the mad canadian has it has is it four? Four different um it's the four horsemen. That, that's what I'm gonna guess. <laughs> the four, <laughs> four different <laughs> four different spices. peppers. Yes, in his in his seasoning there, it's a, has a great, great kick to it. If you're not if you're not really too into that spicy of a seasoning, I'd suggest doing the snoring heat. I, I personally love the snoring heat. I put it on so so much other varieties, such as like chicken. It's good on fish as well. Um Check out all of those great seasonings um, over at the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. That is the Med Canadian BBQ.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLUCAS10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. This episode of the SLUCAS is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio based, marine owned, roast to order micro coffee roaster let's talk about some of the coffees uh let's see let's let's look at uh the loki the loki uh is one of the lighter coffees they have available to you over at our good friends at iron bean coffee it is a wet process blend uh higher in caffeine lower in acidity rich tasting filled with fragrance citrus uh and floral dominates this taste blend uh, if you don't want the Loki, you could always check out his brother Thor. Uh, it's thunder, it's lightning, and it'll course through your veins. Or you could always check out Dad. Uh, by the way, Thor is a medium roast, Loki's a light roast, and the dark roast version is Odin. Dad likes the dark roast, I guess. Uh, the coffee that will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. So there's some Nordic God-based coffees for you. I love the artwork on the Iron Bean Coffee stuff. Uh, you, the camera is on blur, so you can't really see it. But right here is the ride or die uh, arrow, arrow, finger, whatever. Uh, that's the ride or die. Really cool packaging. The coffee is amazing. And everything's based. Like It's, all, it's just a very integrity-based company that we're incredibly happy and proud to be working with. And you can support them over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Kyle, you, maybe, positive spin. Let's do a positive spin. You want to do some positive spins? All right, sure, sure. Too bad. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, Ohio State's future is very bright. Very. They have their best ever recruiting class coming in mm -hmm. this I, some of them are, are going to be on campus very soon, but best recruiting class ever is coming in. And the 2022 recruiting class has the opportunity to be even better. And you might be thinking Justin Fields, losing Justin Fields. And yeah, you're, you're losing Justin Fields and that sucks. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not, I'm really not trying to minimize that, but I'm letting you know that Ohio state will have two red trip freshmen four-star quarterbacks and a true freshman five-star quarterback fighting for the starting position next year. Mm -hmm. There's worrying about the running back position. We got a five-star and four-star running back coming in here, Henderson and Pryor, as well as let's not forget about uh, Crowley and Chambers as well too. Yeah, and Master Teague's coming back. And Williams, too. Williams showed um, some good moments as well. 
Yeah, the the running backs are great. You know, you know what's coming at the wide receiver position. You you're already well aware. Three stud freshmen already on the team, a fourth that transferred, but three amazing coming in as freshmen in the in the fall spring fall in the <laughs> in the winter slash spring. So future's bright at Ohio State. Uh, I don't know if they're ready to make a title run next year. There's there's too many question marks in my opinion to to make such a prediction. So if your question if you just watched Ohio State get stomped by Bama, and if you're questioning when does Ohio State get over the hump, when does Ohio State get over the hump? I I don't think 2021's that season. I think they're good enough to win the Big Ten. They're good enough to beat Michigan. They're good enough to make the playoffs. But what I want to see is this 2021 recruiting class that's coming in. I want to see them as sophomores. I want to have a second year starter at quarterback, whomever that might be, whether it be Stroud or Miller or McCord, whoever that quarterback is, they'll be in their second year starting for Ohio State. I think you'll have a bunch of defensive players, both who are freshmen right now and who are coming in as true freshmen here soon, who will be juniors and sophomores for that run. They'll be very good next year. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you to like throw away the 2021 season by any means, not at all. I I don't think that they're ready to win a national title. I think they're ready to go back to the playoffs and run the big 10 I think it's entirely possible that Ryan Day continues his streak of not ever losing a regular season football game. Yeah, there's a really good chance of that too. Um, Wide receivers looking really good, as Jared said. Tight ends are losing. um, We don't know. Losing Farrell there. Um, I'm going to assume Ruckert is going to be back. We don't know. We don't know about Rucker. We're, we're we're not playing the are they coming back game or not today. There there will be future episodes for that. Tight end could be a question mark, maybe. Offensive line, I think offensive line will still be really good next year. Defensive end, I think will be good. Uh, really keep an eye out for Noah Potter. I think that's a name yeah. every Buckeye player Jack should know. Jack Sawyer. Season. Oh, that's defensive, on the defensive tackle. Yeah. Defensive tackle. There, there's some names there. I mean, we'll see. We'll see what the defensive tackle is. Linebackers is going to be very new. New. Very new. That's going to be one I'm really interested in seeing. in the chat. The, <laughs> uh, the, so what, one thing that we've talked about in the past year that we've never really talked about with Ohio State. When, when, the, sometimes when we talk about different teams and they're like, oh, hey, this person returned, but they weren't even good to begin with, but yeah. yet they're starting there. Did, did he get better or is it that there's just nobody better to replace him with? Could we say that really with the linebacking crew that we saw here with Ohio state? I'm looking forward to Ohio state's linebackers next year. Okay. So pretty much everybody you saw there, Borland, Browning, Hilliard, Werner. Well, some of them could return with, with the eligibility that, but won't. Um, it could, but, but won't. Okay. Uh, we we saw a bunch of the Ohio State seniors go through like uh, like a basically a digital senior day. Uh, the week that Michigan canceled, and I'll just tell you guys right now, unless someone really changed their mind, those players aren't coming back. If they went through that digital senior day thing, those players have are not coming back. And I'm I'm going to say this as nicely as I can. Mm. Every single player because of the 2020 eligibility waiver or wh- whatever the heck we call that is permitted by the NCAA to come back and play another year. That does not mean that Ohio State is permitting them to come back and play for another year. Mm. That's me saying that as nicely as I can. Sometimes yeah. it's time to make room for the next batch of guys. 
Yep. Linebackers will be raw next year. So that's definitely going to be another area to keep an eye out. Same thing with DBs. We saw <laughs> we saw how interesting that team, that position was this year in safeties as well. We have a number of um, DBs and safeties coming in for next year. So we'll see, we'll see how they got a year under their belt. As long as things continue to prove, if they have a spring practice here, see how well they can develop during the spring practice. Michigan bucking up points back that Cam Brown will be healthy again. Cam Brown will be healthy. Now, special teams. We're losing both the kicker and the punter. It's fine. New new Aussie coming in to handle the punting, and we already know there's a freshman kicker on the team because we we saw him kick a few times just last night, our last night. Yep. So future's still bright. Overall, I mean, you look, I just went through every position here. Future is still very bright for Ohio State. Some question marks? Yeah. Yeah, there will be. But overall, very bright. I echo what Jared said. Expect them to compete, win the conference, and have a shot there at the um, the playoffs for next year, too. Yeah, I think this is a, I think the 2021 team is playoff capable. I don't think they're national title capable, but they'll go to Indy, they'll win Indy, they'll be in the playoff conversation, they'll probably make it, and lose <laughs> at some point in the playoffs that that's my expectation for the 2021 team prove me wrong I'm in a positive way in a positive way prove me wrong uh but 2022 I think is Ohio State's year mm-hmm. uh it's disappointing with Justin Fields and so much of I I really I feel like 2019 was Ohio State's year and yep. the Clemson game turned out the way the Clemson game turned out. But I also don't know if anyone, because we saw LSU get embarrassed by, by, by LSU. We saw Clemson get embarrassed by LSU in the national title game. And I, I don't know that Ohio State would have fared any better there or not. Um, I kind of feel like LSU was just an off- offensive buzzsaw that I don't know if anyone had answers for the same way I kind of feel like Alabama was an offensive buzzsaw this year. I don't know if if anyone has any answers for, but the good news is, is that I think Ohio state is shaping up for 2022 to be an offensive buzzsaw that no one has any answers for second year, highly touted quarterback, Ohio state's current slate of wide receivers who will all either freshmen and incoming freshman wide receivers who all be in their third and second years, the running backs, Two studs coming in who will be in their second years. Some talented freshmen currently on the team who will be in their third year. Ohio State's going to be amazing in 2022. They'll be good next year. They'll be amazing in 2022. It's coming. I'll know that, by the way, and, and I don't want to... Ohio State's the second best team in the country right now. Ohio State is the second best team in the country right now. And it sucks because there seems to be a real big gap between one and two. Yep. There's a real big gap between one and two, and that sucks. Mm. And that, but it's 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 what it is. You just have to respect Bama. Six titles in 12 years, Kyle. Is that the number? Yes. Six yeah. titles in 12 years for Saban at Bama. You just have to respect it. You can envy it if you want. If that's if envy is more your speed, envy it. Respect it is what I choose to do. And know that that can be Ohio State. The way Ohio State's recruiting right now, the way Ryan Day is currently setting up his, his team, that can be Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Saban's not going to be at Clemson, or excuse me, at Alabama much longer. Kyle, I don't, did you, I don't know how, much, how many people in Buckeye Nation had the stomach to sort of sit through the post game. I did. And Saban, who's often seen as, and maybe, and probably rightfully so, is like an old curmudgeon old man, seemed very sort of sweet and reflective. I'm not saying he's retiring. But I think he's at least 
in the back of his mind, I think he was enjoying that more than I've ever seen him actually enjoy the way he was talking about his seniors. I, I, I swear to God, I've seen Saban on that podium enough times that I think at most times Saban's annoyed to be on the podium taking the trophy because he'd rather be out recruiting. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's the Saban I saw Monday night. I mean, it's been a while since he won a national title. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by his standards, yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I respect the hell out of Bama, and I envy Bama, and I want Ohio State to be Bama. I think, I think at this point, just two things. You just got to lick your wounds yeah. and just learn, just learn from what happened here. And as the, the late, great Woody Hayes once said, there's nothing that cleanses your soul like getting the hell kicked out of you. Kyle, on that note, I think it's time to do some Ask, ask Sloopcast questions. Absolutely. Austin Formation, Jared. Kind of, I think we already kind of answered this already, but would you get rid of Combs? I would absolutely not. No. All right. Um, he then asks us, will this follow OSU like the Clemson loss of 31 to nothing? No. I don't think so. Um, we we saw it. We saw it, and I know that sometimes, especially the the leader, the the leader in sports broadcasting in Bristol, Connecticut. I, I understand that there's a double standard, and that Ohio State doesn't get the same treatment as other teams. But I don't feel like Clemson getting buzz sawed by LSU was held against LSU this year. Because that's what happened. Clemson mm -hmm. got buzzsawed by LSU. And it wasn't held against them. Now, does that mean Ohio State's going to receive the same treatment from the sports media world that Clemson got? I think we both, I think we all probably know the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But I, I but uh, long story short, no. I, I do not think so. The fact that it was that they they beat Clemson. There are, are three teams right now. There are three teams in college football right now. It's Ohio State, it's Clemson, and it's Bama. Now, realistically, there's one team in college football right now, and there's two teams that are kind of close. And after after Monday night, we all know who's who. Mm -hmm. Ohio State's the second best team in all of college football right now. And it just sucks because you're not even close to number one, apparently. But they're still the number two team in all of college football right now. All right. Um, another question from Austin Formation here, Jared. What was your favorite memory from the 2020 season? Something more specific than just say the Clemson game is preferred. Um, Favorite... Other, can't just say the Clemson game. Um, I don't. I don't know that I have one. I don't. I don't know it was that kind of season. Um, yeah. It would definitely be from the Clemson game. Um, I, some of the favorite memory. I think. I think the story with Sermon is definitely a highlight. Well, if we're if we can go like big story just to see Cooper and Hilliard finally get their time and their reps, I think is yeah. huge I think sermon because you have this transfer coming in from Oklahoma first, first few games. We were like, even, even on this show, we were like, we were sitting here and talking about him just saying, he looks like he's trying to break it every time he gets to the ball. And, it, and that's what it looked like. It just took time for him to get used to the play calling, to the plays, to the players. And he had a great streak there at the end, just running all over Northwestern, running mm -hmm. all over Clemson. Who knows if he would have ran all over Alabama too? Who knows? We'll never, we'll never, we'll never get know. to know. But that, that's, that's, that's going to be a highlight for me other than really seeing just – was this the best duo wide receivers as well that Ohio State has had in a season? 
I mean, it doesn't turn out that way because 2020, but mm -hmm. a lot of things didn't turn out the way we wanted to because 2020. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Austin Formation also asks, I know there would be time for it, but just briefly touch on which Buckeyes you think will be back and which will not. I think we'll get to that in the next episode. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think, Kyle, are we... Are we officially going back to one per from here on out? I think we're officially. Well, okay. Well, we don't have an answer yet. We'll definitely yet. be back for Monday and yes. we'll let you know what the plan is after that. Yeah. Um, the. I, I think who's going, who's staying again. If you saw them go through their digital senior day that they did on social media, you can consider them gone. I think is probably the first place to start. Mm -hmm. I think you will see Olave and Fields leave. I, I don't think that's even a question. I mean, I mean Fields, Fields base that right away. He basically he's, confirmed it. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to miss these guys. Yeah, uh, it's basically confirmation. Not that anyone is even a little bit surprised by that. I don't think Ohio State's going to. We'll, we'll see what happens with the defensive tackles. I will, I'm just going to say that. Um, there's some positive buzz, but even, listen, there are rumors out there. I'll just say it. There's rumors out there right now that Haskell Garrett's returning to Ohio State. Fine. That's great. And those rumors could very well be true. That doesn't mean that Haskell doesn't change his mind. So, Whatever it is, it is. Uh, Ohio State could probably use a, a defensive tackle back. I think would be huge. It's time to get the young guys in there at defensive end. It's time to get the young guys in there at linebacker. And it's time to get guys like Seven Banks and Cam Brown and Josh Proctor into a full offseason with Coach Combs and get them coached up to where they need to be. Absolutely. Uh, so I don't think you're going to lose, maybe outside of the defensive tackles, I don't think you're going to lose anyone who you're going to miss on the defensive side. Um, the On the offensive side, like I said, Fields Alave gone, Sermon gone. Out, gone. What's that? Farrell, uh, I think, did all the digital senior day stuff. He's gone. White Davis. White Davis is gone. Uh yeah, I, that's uh, the I'm blanking on the center's name. Kyle, help me out. Myers. Myers is gone. Um, I, I don't. The only people who I'm watching, who I'm watching with sort of a keen eye, guys who I actually think Ohio State wants back and might want to come back are the within that sort of defensive interior is is where I'm watching closely right now because I think everyone else is either definitely leaving or definitely staying. Yep. Right. Michigan Buckner well, asked so Jeremy Ruckert is also someone to watch. Yes. I'm yep. not 100% Michigan. sure what's happening there. Michigan Buckner asks us Jared, the offensive line has been average at best while coach Stud has been at Ohio State. Is it time to look at another option? Coach Stud is I, I think deserves a lot of credit for what he was able to put together. I mean, think about the Michigan State game and all the players that they didn't have and what they were able to put together. I also like, think even about this game too, even this game with one of your starters out as well. Able to you're able to rotate guys in, have them playing different positions. You're talking about after even, Davis got even, hurt. Even yeah, even one who Transition to a center for a game, even though started off rough with a lot of high snaps and all yeah. that, but rotating players around different positions on that offensive line and still really looking pretty good. He's, I think he's a very good developer of talent and I think he's good schematically. I, I think he is also the weakest link on Ohio State's coaching staff from a recruiting standpoint. 
And Ohio State's had a lot of really bad misses along the offensive line. And I think in order to be at Ohio State, to be a position coach at Ohio State, you got to do both. Mm -hmm. And will Coach Stud be back next year? And I don't know. All right. Um, Next question here. Dinger asks, Jared, concerning lack of adjustments to a defense that was getting torch, is it time to question the Combs experiment? I think we already answered that. We've answered that. Yep. Uh, Nomad asks, can we get ludicrous speed to September tw- to no, September 2nd? No. Sorry. We already ludicrous speed our way through 2020. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Never wish away your life. Yes. You know what? Well, that, that's the answer. All right. Um, Buckeye underscore Zach. What can we expect out of the linebacker unit coming into the 2021 season? Do they have high expectations for how paramount they will be? I, it's hard to have high expectations when you're basically starting a whole new crew. Mm -hmm. Now there's talent there. And I think Ohio state's linebackers have the current batch, the new batch of Ohio State linebackers have received better coaching than the batch who are leaving Ohio State right now. So I have. Kyle, I'm trying to say this really nicely. I don't know what's going to happen with the linebackers next year, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> Is that that's me trying to say it nicely. I don't know what's going to happen with the linebackers next year, but I'm ready think, for it. Yeah. The, I think the backers were much improved this year. Absolutely. And, they were. And I, I definitely think so more so, especially with Pete Warner. Like I thought Pete of, Warner was pretty good last year too, but yeah, he, he stepped up so big in a lot of games and just showed his versatility. Even almost, almost kind of like in that. Um, oh, uh, what, what it, are we getting background noise? Oh, I thought we fixed that. <laughs> oh jared all right um the getting sidetracked here the um yeah warner i think what, what's the position called it's not the the star position the um they call it bullet the bullet position i think i think warner would have done really well in the in in the bullet position too. Uh just with how with how well he he performed this year. And I know a lot of people, especially this last game here, will still pick on Tough Borland. But I think overall, I think Tough had a great game too. It just when you have that much speed on the field, and we sat here too. When you have that much speed on the field, tough Borland, most of the time it's going to be um it's going to hurt your defense with the lack of speed that tough had. Yeah. This was not a game for tough Borland. Nope. Nope. All right. Um, let's see. Next question here from sun card. Now that we are in the wasteland, do you ever run through lottery winning scenarios? What would you do if you, if you cleared $200 million? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> We're not in the wasteland yet. Not yet. I, I don't really go through lottery winning scenarios because it's it's the lottery. I don't I don't try to <laughs> spend too much time thinking about different scenarios guys, and all. Guys, 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 guys. The lottery is the worst possible gamble you can gamble on. That that's I always tell you, don't real life gamble. That extends to the lottery. It's a fool's bet. If you want to gamble, there are games you can play with much, much better odds. Don't, don't, don't get enticed. Don't get sucked in by that big number because you're not going to win it. Oh, what Uh, if I do? You're not gonna. Someone does. 
sure. It's not going to be you, though. All right, here we go. Barley asks us, end of season yearbook awards. Who is the most likely to succeed? To succeed at the NFL? He just says, most likely to succeed. I will say Chris Olave. Mm-hmm. I think so, too. Who is the class clown? Uh, Demario McCall. Yeah, that, that's, that's one thing. That's the one I'm thinking of. Life of the party. Justin Fields. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, most improved. Seven Banks was yes. a complete disaster at the beginning of the year and through the fire came out the other side, a pretty decent corner. I think, completely. I think by September of next year, we'll all be very surprised by how good Seven Banks is. He's just got thrown into the fire a little too early. Best dancer. Also, Justin Fields. That's actually kind of why I made him late for the party. I was going to say Wilson, but uh, best attitude. Uh, Jonathan Cooper. Yes, Cooper. Haskell Garrett. I, lo- I love Cooper. I mean, the first to receive the Block O jersey. That's it's kind of what I was I was going on. Person you will be working for someday. Um. In a way, I kind of feel like mm. Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> that one might also be Jonathan Cooper. Yeah. Most likely to be a motivational speaker. Maybe Cooper as well. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe even Garrett. I don't Ask know. I, I don't have an answer for that one. And the person you would want to be on a deserted island with. Oh, I don't know. Who's who's like the... Who's who's like the most survival man is survival man ish of them? I don't I don't have the answer to that question. You know, you almost want to like maybe pick a kicker or a punter, uh, just because Drew Chrisman. <laughs> you might want to pick Drew Chrisman simply because those other guys are going to eat a lot of food. <laughs> those those giant yeah. bodies require a lot of calories yeah. to keep going. You never know when that bottle, you never know when that bottle flipping will come in handy. Also, if it comes down to it, you might need to win the fight. (laughs) Like it might come down to the two of you. And I'm not saying Drew Chrisman could kick my ass. I'm sure I'm not suggesting otherwise, but I at least stand a chance against Drew Chrisman. Whereas I don't stand a chance against Tommy Togi. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let's see. Stuart underscore E4. U.S. vet. Would you rather be blown out or lose closely? I ask because I feel the blowout allowed me to get past it faster. I definitely agree to that second part. Yes. I, I get what you're saying because we held on to the Clemson loss all year. Because what if J.K. Dobbins didn't get hurt? What if the pass interference, not the pass interference, the fumble overturn? What if the targeting? What if, what if, what if? And this is just kind of a, we played, we played the what if game all year. Whereas Bama, like here we are in the post Bama, or the post Bama podcast. And we're already like the quarterbacks look really good next year. The linebacker, like we're already kind of moving past it. Um, But I, you, you never, but you just never want to get blown out. Exactly. I'm, if I were to choose one of the two, I would lose closely. Because getting blown out just kind of proves kind of like what um, Woody G in our Discord saying here. Um, you, if you lose, if you lose big, you get blown out. It makes you look like you don't belong there. Pretty much. And there will be people who will, if Ohio State's in the playoff conversation next year, you know, and it's a bubble, and kind of, you're kind of always in the bubble for a four-team playoff. Mm-hmm. It will it will be used against Ohio State. Y'all got smashed against Bama. Y'all got smashed against Bama. 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 But I think, but I think next year, if that's ever brought up, it you could just counter that and be like, yeah, but Ohio State crushed Clemson there too. 
No one yeah. was beating Alabama last year. Pro, yeah, and and that's kind of the pass I, I gave LSU, or excuse me, I gave Clemson that pass in regards to LSU last year. A lot of people held that against Clemson, and I was just like, Joey Burrow and that entire yep. team, no one was stopping them. Exactly. And yep. I gave that pass to Clemson. Now, did everyone give that pass to Clemson? No. Did a lot of people? Sure. But you you just never, you never want to feel like you don't belong on the field. No. But hey, at least it was Bama instead of Iowa. Yes. I think that is all the questions we have here, Jared. Uh, Buckeye Zach asks, type of ball you want to be stranded on a desert island with a Spalding or a Wilson? I'm going to go with Spalding. And I say that simply because I don't want to rip off Tom Hanks. I want to try and do something original. So at least give me Spalding. Because then I feel like I could call him like Bald Spald. And we have a nickname already. See, it's a, it's a Spalding. It's fine. Everything's fine. All right. All right. I think that is it, Jared. That is an episode. <laughs> That's an episode. That is an episode. <laughs> That's an episode, everybody. Got everything. In co- <laughs> uh, check out the sloopcast.com. Uh, but can I, can I, I'm, this is, this is me doing the spiel. Join the Patreon. That's fine. I want to say how thrilled I am with our discord server because I was jumping back and forth between our discord server and our, and, and Twitter. So Twitter, discord server, Twitter. And I feel like as it was becoming apparent that Ohio state was not going to win the game, Twitter became insanely toxic and our discord server did not. And I just want to say how proud I am of the community that the Sloop Cats are building along with Kyle and I and the culture we have. And I'm I'm just incredibly thankful that we have the Discord to go to when Twitter is no longer tolerable, which is which is most of the time. Twitter is not tolerable most of the time. And it's really nice to just be like, well, I'm going to leave that now and I'm going to go to the discord instead. And that's, that's both me thanking the, our discord community as well as advertising our discord community, because I, you know, I'm saying this in the part where we plug our own stuff and (laughs) Yes, thank you, Michigan Bucknut. Michigan Bucknut says I'm close to deleting my Twitter account and, because and, of and the, the Discord too. And the good thing, if if there's anybody else that's like that too, it's close to deleting um, Twitter account because I know I have a I have someone I know closely that's on the same boat there too, Michigan Bucknut, who's ready to close their Twitter account just because of how toxic in general, not just sports, just in general that Twitter is, and just staying off the social media. And I told him, I'm like, Hey, if you still want updated on Buckeye news, check out discord. We got, we got a great, we got a great follows here. We got great people in here. And you know what? We still have um, like key Twitter plugins in here too. So you can still keep up to date on maybe there's something going on in other Ohio state sports. Like we have, we have different plugins for, for men's hockey. There's, um, men's soccer, men's lacrosse, um, women's basketball, men's basketball. So you'll still stay up to date on any information related to anything Ohio State in here too. And heck, even even last Sunday, Jared, our professional sports with the Cleveland Browns um, had a lot of hype and talk in there too. Yeah, there, yeah it was. It was. Right on. Yeah, no, 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 no. But yeah, no, it was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the professional talk isn't nearly as busy no. as the college football talk, but we do have a specific channel just for professional sports talk. And, and, um, and it may pick up again Sunday. Wink, wink. It may. I don't know why we're winking. The NFL schedule is public, Kyle. Well, for people who want to join, but either way. <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, uh, come join the Discord server. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have strict rules about content. 
uh, about there being no political this or that and there not being hate speech and uh, just we we police it very closely and we try and protect the community we have and we do punish people who step out of line and we do so fairly. So it's come hang out. That's all I'm saying. Come hang out. And um, Kyle, anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, let's see. Speaking of other sports, basketball, Ohio State beat Rutgers since the last time that we talked. So good um, game. It was a good game. And I think a lot of the Buckeye, the Buckeye team there kind of took offense after like Rutgers um, came out and said, well, Ohio State cheated and, and blah, 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 the last game. And Ohio State's like, whatever. And, and <laughs> takes takes the win over Rutgers 79 to 68 last weekend. Uh, let's see. As we're recording this, Jared, they play Northwestern Wednesday. And then they play Illinois at Illinois on Saturday. So a couple of tough games coming up here. Really, really the rest of their season, for the most part, is really tough. Big Ten basketball, guys, is really good this year. Yeah, they say that every year, but how many national titles do, do, do we ever actually win? Yep. All right. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all. I, I had got. to get one last piece of negativity in there. Gosh darn it. No, I didn't. Stadium coming along pretty nicely. <laughs> there you go. There's, there's your positivity. Kyle, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a sort of a retro psychedelic band called the Warren Flints. Uh, you can check them out. Uh, there will be links down in the show notes. And uh, that's, I think that's it. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Warren Flints. Indeed, Woody G. Go Bucks. Michigan Bucknut said his sister joined the Discord. Nice. Well, I won't ask you to out her. <laughs> because she has because she's either not joined yet. Oh, PA Bucknut. I, I just said don't out her. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Yeah, we had we had quite a few new people joining the Discord, so the funny thing is, is that I really didn't mean to turn this into another Discord. Um advertisement but here we are we had a we had a bunch of people join like after ohio state either lost or was obvious that ohio state was gonna lose had several people join and i thought to myself well crap i need to keep an eye on this because these are obviously trolls coming in here and like i, I need to ban them because one of the rules in the discord is no trolls and i was just getting ready to ban hammer them right away but no they were just ohio state fans looking for a place to non-toxically talk about the ohio state loss and and just vent a little bit but but do so in a a way that i, I don't want to i don't want to use that phrase because of recent events but they're so, so twitter is so pitchforky it's, you know, but yeah, it is what it is. Kyle, let's do our last ad reads. <clears throat> Once again, I'd like to thank the Warren Flints for ending today's episode. And of course, I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a micro batch, fresh roast to order coffee company based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. Um, they have many great coffees. I already told you about some of them. Uh, did you know, Kyle, that they have some coffees available in K-Cups, which if I am not mistaken, and for the record, I might be, if I am not mistaken, is the fierce, the rage against the dying of the light and the ride or die. I believe those are the three last I looked that they had in. Don't 
don't be mad at me or the Iron Bean Coffee Company if I'm incorrect about that. But the last I looked, those are the three available in K-Cups. You can save money by buying more than $50 worth of coffee. That gets you free shipping. Or you can sign up for a subscribe and save service. And the subscri subscribe and save service uh, gives you a discount. And you get coffee automatically shipped to you so that you never run out. How amazing is that? Uh, the Fierce is a dark roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans. The Rage Against the Dying of the Light uh, has notes of cherry, milk chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. Uh, the Ride or Die is a gentle, distinctive version of the American breakfast cup. Uh, a, a has Brazilian yellow bourbon coffee beans, su superb smoothness and flavor. You can find those coffees, the other coffees I mentioned, and a bunch of coffees I didn't mention over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian has been a proud sponsor of the Mad of the Swoopcast here for <laughs> for quite a while. He he also he sponsors himself. He's he does. He yes. is an unapologetic self advertiser. Yes. The sloopcast.com. Yes. <laughs> uh, some of the seasonings, some of the seasonings here, Jared. Uh, going to his website here. Let's let's dig into some of the rib rubs that he has on his website. That is medicanatingbbq.com. The old fashioned, Jared. The old fa fashion is an interesting spice, mimics the classic drink. They think they've nailed it. It's a sweet bourbony with the right kick of bitter. Or the coffee and Q, one of Jared's favorite there. Has a blend of coffee, barbecue seasoning that offers the right amount of coffee flavor and barbecue flavor that will add that something extra to your food. Or even the two border. It's a flagship seasoning over at the Mad Canadian. Um, it's a great mix of maple sugar, red pepper flakes that they usually that they use on all of their ribs at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. It's a maple sugar that gives a clean, crisp, sweet flavor while the red pepper flakes add just the right amount of heat to the pork. Also great on eggs and bacon. Be sure to check out those and the other great seasoning is over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to use promo code SLOOPCAST10, SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered.